the marine spirits. These are the ones I see are going to rise up now in great anger to come on land to war with the people of God. The signs of the times are all around us and Jesus commanded us to watch and pray. Join me, Jennifer LeClaire, as we unpack the prophetic significance of current events, share the Holy Spirit's revelations for this hour, and offer strategies for walking in the Spirit and triumphing over spiritual warfare in the last days. Get equipped in this episode of the End Times Watchman. Are we on the verge of World War III? Many people think so, and it doesn't take a profit to see the signs of the times. It was my absolute honor to host Brother Sadhu right here in our South Florida studio for a conversation about the end times. We're getting into the rise of wartime intercessors, the need for a Holy Spirit inspired prayer force, angels on assignment for war like we've never seen before, the rise of water spirits invading the land. This is deep. And Really, there's so much more in this conversation. Be sure to stay tuned to the end because I have a free resource for you that will equip you to walk in and walk victorious in some of the things we're teaching today. So, Brother Sadhu, we are living, as you know, in perilous times, mm -hmm. what Paul called perilous times. There's wars and rumors of wars. There is there's 54 conflicts around the world, as I understand it, right now. And we are really and have been for some time on the verge of World War III. People are having dreams, people are having visions. What is the Lord showing you about the escalation of the wars and the signs of the times around us? Well, if you look at the scriptures that which the Lord Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24, that wars will increase more and more. And what we are seeing in our present days, like you very beautifully specified about 54, places where wars are taking place. These are just will build up to the final great one, the third world war. Mm -hmm. And the wars that the Antichrist will initiate mm -hmm. so that he will ultimately also bring everything under his control. So this is something I don't think we can uh, avoid. It will build up towards it. It will. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of when. Mm. And I don't believe I've ever lived in a time like this where the signs of the times are prevalent, but they're happening at the same time. Like we've seen wars, we've seen famines, mm -hmm. but it's as if there's a, a concert of all these different warnings that Jesus gave us. Uh, you know, in Matthew 24, the Lord just said, wars, famines, and earthquakes, mm -hmm. they all seem to take place simultaneously, or rather, wars, famines, and pestilences. Mm -hmm. They all take place simultaneously together. Mm -hmm. In many nations where they have experienced great wars, the wars always produce a famine, mm -hmm. and then wars also produce pestilences because of dead bodies lying everywhere. They have no time to bury them. So it results uh, like one opens the door for another. It does. It's a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. It's a ripple effect. The principalities and powers are raging and Satan is trying to change the times and the laws. But I'm praying for more time for the sake of the souls. It's mm -hmm. more difficult for the missionaries to go into the harvest fields when there's wartime. And when I was with Cindy Jacobs and Bishop Bill Hammond in November, last November at the Apostolic Council, um, they were calling for a rise of wartime intercessors. Mm -hmm. How key is intercession in you know, holding back what's inevitable? Because it is inevitable, but what role do intercessors play? I'm glad you mentioned this because last month, the Lord gave me a word mm -hmm. about raising up an army of prophetic intercessors, but this prophetic intercessors should not be of the normal kind, like what we see today, but they should be those who will be taken up in the spirit to war against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. A good example of, of that was 
the recent war that took place between Hamas and Israel. Mm. Most of the warfare that was conducted were no more on land level. It was all on the air combat. Like for example, Hamas shot missiles mm -hmm. and then Iran, they fired missiles. Mm -hmm. And Israel protected herself with the Iron Dome. So when I read about that, then the Lord explained to me, this is the level of intercession that is now needed in the church. Wow. No more on ground level. It should be on the high heavenly realm. So he said, now you need to raise up a company of intercessors, prophetic intercessors, not just simply those who hear what others say or they see a need and then they intercede. But it's time now to hear from the Holy Spirit. So when, when the Lord told me that, I remembered something I read years ago in the book by Roland Buck on Angels on Assignment. Yes. There, the Holy Spirit, or oh, he was visited by Michael, you know. Mm -hmm. So Michael tells him, please uh, come to the living room. We have an urgent message to let you know. So when he walks into the living room, he sees big, huge four of angels. And he was scared. I'm sure you would be, right? Yes. And he asked Michael, who are these? This, he said, these are the warrior angels. And what are they doing here? Oh, there's a war assignment against you. That is why we are here. And he started to tremble. And then the angel said, Michael said, look out the window. And he saw a hundred warrior angels standing all around his yard. Wow. And he asked, what are all this? Oh, the Holy Spirit picked up information about what the enemy's plan is against you. So he dispatched these angels to protect you and to war on your behalf. So this came to my remembrance. The Holy Spirit picked up information and he gave to the angels. So this is where we should now rise up to hearing from the Holy Spirit and then pray accordingly. This is profound. It's almost as if we need an air force. Yes, exactly. A, a holy mm -hmm. air force. Like when Elisha's servant mm -hmm. could not see in the spirit mm -hmm. and the army was surrounding them and Elisha prayed that his servant's eyes would be open and they saw the army, mm -hmm. the horses, the chariots of fire, and there was more with them exactly. than there were. So what advice would you give to intercessors who, you know, they're not necessarily comfortable or acquainted with working with angels. Because when Bishop Bill Hammond came to ministry here some years ago, he told me, he said, Jennifer, you need to start cooperating with the angels. He said, this Awakening House of Prayer is a spiritual warfare outpost in the region, and you need to begin to cooperate with the ministry of angels. And so we've been pressing into that for the last several years, and we've been seeing results from that, to your point. Mm -hmm. But many intercessors, they've been taught, you know, well, you can't work with angels. They've been taught, you know, that's heretical or, or they just haven't been taught at all. They're ignorant to the, the benefits, the, the heavenly host, the ministering spirits. How would we ascend? How would we work with angels? What does that look like practically? Do you want me to be politically correct or blunt? Please be blunt. To be blunt and honest, such intercessors will be put aside. They'll be put aside because they are at low level. Let me give you one good example. Mm -hmm. In 1995, I was invited to South Africa for a meeting. So one specific meeting was organized for the intercessors of South Africa. So I fasted and prayed the whole day because that was my first foray into ministering to intercessors, you know. And at the end of the day, I had a visitation from the Lord Jesus and he told me, don't go and share deep things to these intercessors because they are all baby intercessors. Mm. Baby. I was shocked. So I said, all right. So the Lord told me, just share with them basic things about intercession. So when I went to the meeting, there were about 30 choice intercessors of the city in Johannesburg. So I told them what the Lord revealed to me and they all just seemed indifferent, you know except for one lady. She hung down her head. 
uh, and never lifted up her face and looked at me for the rest of that one hour. And at the end of the meeting, and everyone just got up and walked away as if nothing new or, I mean, it was just an ordinary thing for them to hear, yeah. except for that one lady. She came up to me with great contrition. She apologized to me of the very low level standard mm. that's found among them. She said, I've been, I've been knowing this all along and been trying to raise these people up to that level. So I know for absolute sure, now this was in 1995, mm. but now after almost 30 years, yeah. we cannot play games anymore, you know? Just like, uh, uh, because you mentioned about Bill Hammond saying to you that you should cooperate with angels, I should add to say, when I walk into your church, I did see powerful angels standing in your church mm. and they are waiting to speak to you mm. and to give you messages. Not so much for you to minister to people, mm -hmm. but to war. Yes. War. And these are powerful angels, warrior angels. And I see them holding huge sword in their hands and just waiting for you to respond to them. And they will then start giving you instructions hmm. or like giving you a war manual, what you should do. Especially you will have uh, teachings on to war with water spirits, hmm. the marine spirits. These are the ones I see are going to rise up now in great anger to come on land to war with the people of God. Wow. Wow. Several nations that I was uh, visiting last year, especially in Africa, you know, yeah. I saw these water spirits, demons, like in the shape of crocodiles, hippopotamus, just come out from the sea and they start walking inland. So I revealed this when I was ministering in those nations. I saw this in Nigeria, in uh, Ghana, and these spirits who, that were once upon a time confined to the waters now seem to have the ability to dwell both in water and on the land. My like goodness. very amphibious, you know? Mm -hmm. And they start walking in the land. Even in the hinterland, like the nation of Togo, mm -hmm. which is in the northern part of uh, Ghana, the spirits come out and start walking in the land. So we also need to raise up Marines, like Navy SEALs, uh, Navy Force, Air Force, and uh, drone warfare. That's something. I wrote a book on water spirits mm -hmm. some years ago and was intrigued by the lack of knowledge or the lack of revelation that mm. Christians have about mm. these spirits. And since I wrote that book, people have emailed me from all over the world mm. saying, I hadn't heard of such a thing, but this is what I am dealing with. Mm. These behemoths, these mm -hmm. pythons, these leviathons. Now, Derek Prince taught, I love Derek Prince. Derek Prince used to have a church in this region mm. and there was revival here. And James Gall prophesied that uh, Awakening House of Prayer were called to redig the wells of revival that mm. Derek Prince originally dug. So we've been we've been doing that, but we have come against, or I should say, this Leviathan spirit has come against us. In certain seasons, it rages against us, and we've always successfully withstood. We've held our ground against it. It releases all manner of witchcraft. It, in my experience, uh, tag teams with with um, with Jezebel mm -hmm. uh, very frequently. Um, uh, but Derek Prince, he taught that he believes that Leviathan is Satan himself. And he uses the reference in the book of Revelation also as the dragon. And there are many different uh, takes on this, but wh what do you think about this Leviathan? Could this be Satan himself or Satan's chief prince? No, I don't think so. I have seen Leviathan mm. when I was once uh, praying in, sitting in Egypt. Hmm. The Lord had us go and do a, a prayer walk in Egypt, you know. So I took a small team of intercessors, choice intercessors, mm -hmm. 
who really know they have their spiritual eyes open and they can see in the spiritual realm and hear the Lord. So um, this is the border area between Israel and Egypt. It's a, a place called Sham el Shak. Mm. So the Lord told me, go there early in the morning. That's the time where the Pharaoh usually go to worship the sea demons, mm. the, like the Nile River, you know. So we, we went to the a spot near Sham el Shak and uh, the Lord gave us specific instruction to stand in the water knee deep. Mm. You know, so the seven of us were told to stand in a hedge like arrow shape like formation. Mm -hmm. So we stood there and as we were worshipping the Lord, pleading the blood of Jesus, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus, from far end of the sea, I saw this huge dragon like Leviathan rise up. I was shocked, you know. For a moment it looked like the Loch Ness monster. Mm. Then it, its face looked like this monstrous dragon-like feature. It rose up from the waters and then looked at us with a sneering face. What are you doing here? That came the snouting. And as we kept on praying and binding it, it just swoosh, entered into the water and f spat off. Wow. It fled. Yes, it fled. It's a fleeing spirit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. It's like the Bible says. Exactly. You know, after seeing all this in the spirit, I understood the Bible better. Mm. You know, when you say it's a fleeing or flying serpent, it's all true. So, Leviathan is different from Satan. He's the highest of all angels, you know. Mm -hmm. So, these are just below him. Mm -hmm. I've always thought it was a very high-ranking yes. principality. Because mm -hmm. there are ranks. I believe mm -hmm. there's even ranks within principalities. Exactly. Um, it's you know, like there's generals, there's two-star generals, four-star generals, five-star mm -hmm. generals. But this Leviathan spirit rages in our region and in many nations of the world. And I believe as we go deeper into the end times, we're going to see stronger manifestations of the Jezebel spirit, Ashtoreth. We're mm -hmm. going to see stronger manifestations of Leviathan in particular. It, it's, well, both of these, you know, the dragon figures and Jezebel are mentioned in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it was left as a, a, a preview, a heads up. I believe, for intercessors, I believe that the book of Revelation is a key book for intercessors. And many people don't even read the book of Revelation. They mm -hmm. say, well, it's too difficult to understand. But the Bible was written for the layman to read. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit, the author of the book of Revelation, will give us inspiration. He'll open our eyes. Scripture says there's a blessing for those who read it and do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that the intercessors should really grab, tag on to the book of Revelation and understand the times we're living to and how to respond. One reason why the book of Revelation is poorly understood or never touched is because of, like you very wisely said, it's difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. Secondly, most pastors don't preach on it. They don't. So there's no awareness. Awareness about the blessedness or the how important the book is. Mm -hmm. During the COVID-19 uh, lockdown period, the Lord had me do an online class. And the first book that I thought was on the book of Revelation. Mm. And I was amazed when about 2,500 people around the world signed up for that course, you know. Wow. So over a three month period, I went worse by worse teaching on the book of Revelation. So there is the remnant in present time is hungry to know the deep things that are found in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. But the larger Christians at large, they are just the easy uh, hyper grace believers. Indeed. Which will be swept away in the end times. Indeed, it's going to be a sad day. Well, we're seeing, I believe. You know, as you are talking, can, can I show, please, share with you something please. about what the Lord is showing me about yeah, you? Yeah. I see something brewing in your stomach area, or rather your womb area, that you will give birth to many, many intercessors. Mm -hmm. Like in the last several years, I remember when you came to speak at our School of Prophets in Nigeria. Yes. 
you were under severe attack by Jesse Bao. Yes. Right? Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, it pained me to see you suffer like that. But at the same time, we had a work to do yes. in Nigeria. Yes. You know? And uh, the several books that I've read about uh, what you wrote about uh, Jesse Bao, I have come to the conclusion that God has specially trained you yes. through theory, through books, and even through practical experiences so that you will be one of the choice <coughs> princess of the Lord hmm. to deal with Jenny, I mean, sorry, Jezebel. Yeah. Well, that would be a confirmation of the word Chuck Pierce gave me in 2017. And I was talking with you on the way over as mm -hmm. we were riding here. And in 2017, I resigned from Charisma Magazine mm -hmm. and launched into full-time ministry. I'd been traveling the nations already, but launched into full-time ministry. And I didn't, and Chuck Pierce at my ordination at Bishop Hammond's church, mm -hmm. afterward he ran into me and he said, the Lord has given you an assignment to, to raise up prophets and intercessors to throw Jezebel off the wall. Wow. Look and I that. didn't realize till just now, mm -hmm. when you said what you said, mm -hmm. Because I mentioned you in the car, I said, I, when I went to full-time ministry, the Lord's, I have been under onslaught now since 2017. And God still blessed me. I still ascended. Our prayer movement is in a hundred nations. Um, God has prospered me. Um, but the first hit was against my body. And it just, it was very difficult. You know, I've traveled all over the world since then despite it, because God's grace is sufficient, mm -hmm. just like Paul had the messenger of Satan. But in, until you said that, I, and there, I told you in the car, the, the assignment two weeks ago broke. Not that it won't ever return, but there was such a heavy, heavy onslaught. Mm -hmm. I was in Singapore taping with you and Jezebel's daughter. Mm -hmm. Atalia. Yes, rose up against me where I could barely stand. My mm -hmm. back was in such spasms and it was, I just faced right before I flew to Singapore, mm -hmm. a major, major betrayal from a spiritual son that just really crushed my heart. Mm -hmm. So there were, that was part of the attack. And so I think that, first of all, thank you for that confirmation and that affirmation. It's not an easy road, but we lay our lives down as you have for Jesus, because I can only imagine, and you don't talk about it a lot, and I'm not gonna ask you to, but I can only imagine the warfare that you've mm -hmm. endured and the demons you've had to conquer oh, yes. in order to ascend to the place that mm -hmm. you are. I see further about these uh, children that are going to be born from your spiritual womb. Shall I please, describe to you? Please. I see this uh, more women than men mm -hmm. that will be born from you. And they all have a sharp sword coming out from their lips. So when they decree, when they pray, it is a sword, sharp sword of the Lord that will go out of their mouth to strike against every evil angel wow. that will rise up. And one more thing, Jennifer, when you mention about uh, how God is expanding your ministry with a hundred prayer groups all over the world, I saw the Lord Jesus stand beside you and looked at you and said, you have not seen anything yet. <laughs> Whatever you have experiencing now, the expansion of your ministry, is just the tip of the iceberg. Wow. And God is going to do a greater work for you in these last days. And you have very correctly said about the importance of the book of Revelation because you have a key role to play in these last days when Satan comes down with his evil angels. You have a very key role to play in marshalling the army of God. One night I was praying, and as I was bowed in prayer, I felt a presence of a being in my room. So I opened my eyes, it was the Lord Jesus standing before me, you know. So my immediate reaction was to get up from the bed to kneel down and bow my head to worship the Lord. As I was about to get up from the bed, I felt a check in my spirit. The Holy Spirit saying, wait, take a good look at this Jesus. The whole world is in crisis. 
And the signs of the times are accelerating. We're in a hinge moment in history, and the enemy knows his time is short. But in 2007, God woke me up after midnight and spoke to my heart about a third great awakening. Now, we're closer than we've ever been before. That's why I'm calling a million revival-minded intercessors to join me in making a new appeal to heaven. I'm calling remnant prayer warriors to gather in one accord to push back the darkness that's invading our churches, our families, and our nations. The enemy is raging. The great falling away is underway. But God always responds to united prayer and fasting. Join me and intercessors in over a hundred nations at Awakening Prayer Hubs. Together, we can change the course of history. AwakeningPrayerHubs.com. Join the movement. Do you need prayer? Let us pray for you. We have operators standing by to pray for your needs, and we are seeing miracles in the prayer ministry. Take a look at some of the miracles that God is doing through our prayer ministry. This woman, when she came here this weekend, she was legally blind. She had nerve damage and went all the way down her neck. And would you like to tell them what happened? Hey, and she just said, impartation. And I went down and my, my eyes are closed and, and I just saw this light in my through my eyelids. And then it just got brighter and brighter, both eyes full of light. Now you have to understand the blindness I had uh, what was the ugliest part of it was the darkness because I could see shapes and they were dark. I didn't see color and his colors anymore, just shapes, couldn't see faces. I have never been without pain for years and, and even though she paid, the Lord healed me and Apostle prayed for me. You know, they diagnosed me with rheumatoid arthritis and as I was sitting there, for the first time I've been able to do this with my hands without pain for years and years. Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you. If you need prayer, send your prayer request through jenniferleclair.org slash prayer. You'll see it down on the bottom of the screen. Our prayer operators are standing by waiting to pray for you. We're believing for a miracle in your life. Marine demons are real and they're getting bolder. Are you prepared to defeat them? when they begin to walk the earth? You can be. Get ready now with my free gift to you. One hour of aggressive prayer against water spirits. Pray along with me. This powerful resource will equip you for the battle ahead. Don't wait. Visit schoolofthespirit.tv slash courses slash marine and arm yourself in prayer to defeat water spirits. Access this resource for a limited time. Victory starts here. For more information, visit jenniferleclair.org. This program has been made by the friends and partners of Jennifer LeClaire Ministries. We hope you enjoy today's teaching.